QuickBooks Online 2024 Bank Reconciliation Month Number 2 Checks and Other Account Decreases. Get ready and some coffee because we're about to go on stage with QuickBooks Online 2024. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file we set up in a prior presentation, opening up the major reports like we do every time. The report's on the left. We're in the favorites, right-clicking on the balance sheet to open link in a new tab, right-clicking the profit and loss, open in a new tab, right-clicking the trusty TB to open in a new tab. Then we'll tab to the right, close up the hamburger, and change the range 010124 tab 02924 tab want to have it on a month by month breakout and then run the report tabbing to the right close the hamburger again change the range again 010124 tab 02924 tab change it to the months again refresh it again tab to the right one more time on the reps of this process hamburger first a word from our sponsor yeah uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways like our accounting rocks product line if you're not crunching chords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must have product because the fact as everyone knows of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets so get the shirt because the creative muse she could use a new pair of shoes if you would like a commercial free experience consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com closed change the range 010124 tab 022924 tab month by month on the breakout run it Let's go back to the balance sheet. We're doing the bank reconciliations this time for the second month of operations, which should be similar to all months after that first month of operations where we had that kind of beginning balance issue often we have to deal with for the first month. We are at the 957705 on our books. The bank statement says that we have 101.590.05 as of the same date the same cutoff date which we're going to imagine is the end of the month even though it says 28 up here and we're in a leap year but if we go back on over let's go to the first tab and let's go down to the uh reports down or let's go into our transactions and then i want to go into the reconcile i'm going to close the hamburger and then I'd like to look at the history here to see that last bank reconciliation to have it open. And if I right click on the view, it won't let me uh, open it in a new tab from here. So I'm gonna right click on the tab up top to duplicate it. And then let's open it from here so we can have this last one open to viewing it. So here's the bank reconciliation as of uh, 131. We're, we have the summary up top. Here's the statement balance, the uncleared transactions, and the register balance as of the first month. Now we want to look at those differences, which were the uncleared checks. These checks we would expect to be clearing in the, the second month in February because they were written in January and they didn't clear in January. So we're hoping those clear in February. Let's see if that is indeed the case. Let's go back to the first tab back to the reconcile we are continuing or resuming the reconciliation process we shall resume and then up top we have the edit information there was our beginning balance there's the ending balance the beginning balance rolling forward of the 61 uh 241 85 the ending balance what we typed in 101 590 05 as of the cutoff date 229 here is our statement balance. That's just what we typed in. It needs to match at the end of this process, the cleared balance, 
Down below is what the cleared balance is consisting of. The beginning balance, which is good. We checked it off. The deposits are good. 51,981. We checked it off. All we have to do is the big part now, which are the decreases and the checks. Remembering that when we're looking at the decreases, if we have physical checks, then we're going to have the check number possibly to help us out. But the date's not going to be as useful given the fact that it, 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 there's going to be difference or variation in how long it's going to take for each individual to cash their check because before the bank knows about the transactions, the other person's going to have to receive the check, deposit the check, and the check's going to have to clear the bank. If they were electronic transfers, on the other hand, then the date would be much more relevant and the check number we wouldn't have, but we might have a description in that case, which would give us some indication of the vendor. So those are just some things to note for the different types of transactions you might uh, be working with. So we're always going to be going from the bank statement to the books because everything on the bank statement is going to have to be on our books unless the bank made an error, which isn't generally the case. If we check everything off on the bank statement to our books, then we should get to this number and we should be able to uh, reconcile. If there are things on our books that aren't on the bank statement, that might not be a problem because those will be the outstanding checks. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go from here, the 357270. And let's go back on over here and see if I could find that. So I'm in the, uh, not all, I'm going to go to the payment side. I'm going to collapse this and I'm looking for that uh, 357270. So here it is. Here's the check number, the 1012. So we can see that we actually wrote that. That's a payroll check that was written in January. So if I looked at my prior bank statement, we could see that that was in my unclear transactions and has now cleared this time. So that's good. That's as to be expected. So we're like, okay, we're good. The, the, our employee got their money. They're not gonna sue us or something. Here's the, the 10, 10, 4, 4, 10, 10, 10, 4, 10. Okay, so that's gonna be 4, 10. So there it is, check number ties out. The date notice is, is a little ways off because it's a check. It was in January that we wrote it. It cleared in February. So we would expect that. We could see that in the uncleared items for last month, which are now clearing this month. So that looks good. All right, done. Mui B to the N. I've got two letters for that. B to the N, B N. So then we're going to say uh, 1013 185640. So 10, 13, 1, 8, 5, 6, 40. Notice the order is different than on, on the bank statement. Why? Because if you have checks, it's likely the order will be different because it's going to be most likely sorted by date. And the date's going to be dependent upon when the actual check's cleared, which is going to vary because the checks depends on who you give the check to and how long it's going to take for them to clear it. Then 10, 15 is 200. So I'm going to go, okay, 10, 15, also note you, well, let's go, let's just 10, 15, 200. This one I actually entered as an expense instead of a check form, but I think that's the one. Uh, it was also on prior month. So there's the 200 here that is clearing in the current period. Okay. And then we'll check that off. Let's see if we can do two at a time here. We've got the 130, 10, 14, and the 13, uh, 5, 8 uh, for the 10, 16. So 10, 14, 10, 16. So here's 10, 16, 1, 3, 5, 8, and then 10, 14. Where's 10, 14? Don Day, I think it's the 130. I couldn't pull off two at a time. Dang it. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. My memory isn't good. That's what you get for watching online so much YouTube and stuff. Anyways, I still check them two off. So we have that. I failed. You failed on it. Do, 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 do. Okay. <laughs> Let's try it again. 10, 10, 18 and 10, 21. 10, 18 and 10, 21. Okay. So here's the 10, 18, 360 and 10, 21. And so there we have that. So that's the 360 and the... Uh, uh, 46877. This is easier if you have it on two screens. See, I got it that time. No problem. Leveling it up. Leveling it up. 
All right, so these ones, I got 1023 is 1856. 1023 is 1856. Uh, 1023, 185670, and then one more uh, on the normal ones here, which are 1024, 1080. So 1024, 1080. Okay, so now we have all of the normal transactions that have been put in place. These two I'm not going to find in our books. So if I look over here, 520, I'm going to say that uh, we cannot find those. I already know this because I made the problem, but see, we can't find it. It's like, oh, dude, I can't find it. I'm looking for those and I can't find it. What's going on? And so, well, and <laughs> so now we have to put, now we have to upload it ourselves into the system. Now, if you had bank feeds, of course, you might have these in, in the system because then the system would, would pull it in through the bank feeds and you'd probably know about them and record them as the bank feeds happen. These are, are withdrawal that could happen from like the owner and then the bank charges that would that would be coming through that are going to be charged by uh, by the bank that we wouldn't know about until that we get the bank statement and they show us that they charged us or we get the bank feeds. So let's what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, we're going to have to add that to our. Are these an error? No, it's not an error. We're not going to get that back. So we're going to have to add them to our system. So let's go ahead and save it for later and then we're going to go into our uh, our transactions into the chart of accounts. Let's just throw this into the chart of accounts, into the checking, view the register, and then I'm just going to add a couple items here. We will go into just using an expense form to do so. As of the end of the month, I'm just going to say 022924, and it's going to be the uh, the we're going to pay the bank, which I just called like Chase. Let's say chase vendor because it's an outflow bank charges was 15 last time this time it's 20 dollars. so we're going to say 20 dollars bank charges and so that's going to go into an expense account have an impact on the income statement of uh the 20 dollars, and it will decrease the checking account let's save it and then the other one is money that was pulled out by the owner so we're going to say this one went to the owner as a vendor, we're gonna say for for a draw. Now, this one was for $500, so 500. Now, last time we put the draw to miscellaneous expense. So we're gonna revisit this, this issue, this problem, that when we see something that the owner drew out, our, our normal thing is, whether it be us or someone else, as a bookkeeper, it's even more difficult because, because we don't know what actually happened. Even if you did it yourself, though, you might know, not know what actually happened. If you pulled $5,500 out of the ATM, then what did you spend it on is, is the question. And can you prove what you spent it on in the event of an audit if you had tax questions about it? So, so quick recap. Remember that, that when we look at our income statement over here the, and we think about it for taxes, for taxes, everything is flipped on its head, meaning... The expenses are good. Those are called deductions. And the income is bad because we're going to have to pay taxes on uh, the income. So, so what we want to do then is make sure that we have an audit trail for any legitimate expense in the event that the government comes back and says, what did this money come from? And we can show them the audit trail. So that would mean that, that what we would like to, to train ourselves or our clients to do to make things as smooth as possible. Say, if it's a business expense, you want to pay it with a credit card or an electronic transfer or a check so we have an audit trail. If it is a personal draw, then, then you draw out the money so that we on the bookkeeping side can say, okay, if money was drawn out, it's gonna be for personal use, meaning it's gonna go on the balance sheet, decreasing the cash, and the other side is going to go into somewhere in the equity section, typically in another account that we're going to call draws or something like that, which would be similar to dividends if it was a corporation. Although for a corporation, it's a little bit more tricky because with a corporation, the dividends have to be uniform across all the shares, which is not the case for a sole proprietor or even a partnership, in which case you can draw out money more or less in accordance with the partnership or agreement or when you have the cash flow for a sole proprietorship. So 
That's what we want to do. So this time we're going to say it's a draw. If it's a draw, it's not going to hit the income statement. Uh, and if it's an expense, it will hit the income statement. If it were an expense, we would, we would also want to see if they can give us some documentation of what the money was spent on. So bottom line is uh, don't spend cash for business expenses if you can help it. Sometimes cash is king. It goes a little bit further. Some people like getting paid in cash. So if you have to, you have to, but you want to, want to save the documentation then. So let's go into here and say if I can find an equity account that QuickBooks has given us for draws this time. So here's all the equity accounts that they have given us. So this is uh, owner's equity that they give us. Here we go, owner's draw. It's an equity account. That's the one we want. So let's go ahead and save this. This decreases the checking account and puts it into the equity of draws. Let's go on over to the balance sheet and then run the balance sheet. Okay, so we had an adjustment then to the checking account here and we have an adjustment to uh, the draws and you can see the draws are now on the books uh, as a negative $500 because it's a contra asset account. So remember the accounting equation here is assets equal liabilities plus equity or assets minus liabilities equals equity or you can think of it as assets being what the company has liabilities and equity representing who has claim to those assets. Well, if you see the equity as our claim as the owner to the assets of the business, then if we drew money out, then we're lowering that amount, right? Because we paid ourselves kind of like paying off the loan to a third party liability. Therefore, you can call it basically a contra liability account, because it's going to be, you know, bringing down the full liability balance. Also, just note that these two accounts, the investment account, and the draws account, will typically in normal bookkeeping, like a textbook format, every month or every year would roll into the equity, which is equivalent to retained earnings. But in QuickBooks, what happens is net income gets closed out automatically on a yearly basis. QuickBooks does not automatically close out on a yearly basis draws and investments. So if you want to close those out on a yearly basis, you would have to do a journal entry to manually close them out. Now you don't have to do that. If you don't do that, then these are just going to show the, the draws and the investments over the life of the business rather than just simply for the current year of the business, which is fine. That's not, that's not a big deal, but just something uh, to be aware of. So that's going to be the general idea there. So let's go back then. And then on the income statement, we recorded, if I, if I run this, we've got our bank fees now. Where do they put the bank fees? Do, 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 here. So now we have another $20 on the bank fees for February. So it's 15 in January, 20 for February. All right, let's go back to the first tab and then open up the hand boogie. And we're going to go down to the transactions. Uh, not Yeah, that's right. And then I'm going to go into the reconcile. And let's resume, resume reconciliation. And so now we have these two that are at the end of the month, these two expenses, there's the 500, there's the 20. And so I'm still out of balance by the 179 K Paso. So if this happens, then I have to go through each of these and say, Okay, what is off here? So I've got I I see that this this uh, 1018, I tied that out with the check number here on 1018, but the dollar amount is different. So here's 360. So something got messed up with the checks that got paid out. It got paid out in reverse order. That can happen sometimes. So so it seems to me, of course, that this 180 is what should have been checked off and not this 360. So I'm going to uncheck the 360 and say that's what it looks right. So now we have the 180 checked off. Now we're also still have a difference of two cents. And again, I would like to get it down to be perfect. Uh, because even if I make an adjustment for that two cents, then that's going to lower the amount of my my assurance due to the fact that uh, that 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 two cents could be a result of multiple deposits and multiple checks. So I'd like to know exactly kind of what that is. So I can go through each of these again and say, okay, there's the the three five seven two, and I can I can say, okay, here's the three five seven two. Let's go back on over here. So do 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 
3572.69 versus 3572.70. So there's, there's part of the problem here, and it's these payroll checks. And part of the reason it happened with the payroll checks is because is because we were trying to use the payroll system uh, and and it had the uh, calculations for the socials for the socials the California taxes kind of messed us up a little bit so we had some rounding differences between our practice problem here and what was in the books so typically if that was the case in practice I would go into the actual check and basically change the check however these are payroll checks so I don't want to actually go through that. I just want to note that that is what the difference is. And next time, I'll actually show you what will happen if we force this adjustment of the two cents, which isn't something I recommend doing in practice. I'd recommend you know fixing it because the, the in practice, the idea would be that the bank statement is correct, right? The bank statement is right unless the bank statement is wrong, you know, which it usually isn't if that's what actually came out of the bank then you would want to make some correction on your side. So we might then, if I didn't want to correct that payroll, you know, I might make another journal entry myself to show the difference so I can actually input exactly what the difference is and why the difference is there or something like that. But I'd like to, to show you what would happen if I just post that two cents. So in a following presentation, when we wrap this up and look at the reports, we'll just basically uh, close, we'll, we'll, we'll finish it, we'll finish now, and QuickBooks will most likely give us an error saying, hey, look, you still, you're still you off. And then you'll say, well, I want you to make the adjustment. So and that's what we'll look at next time. So we have made a change to our financials. So let's, let's leave here. I'm going to save this for later. And then let's go into the, and by the way, did I check them off here? These two are checked off now as having been done. So that's good. And so this one is basically done it's it's off by two cents so our ending balance is good to go so let's take a look at our trial balance now to see where we stand running it and uh, that's not my trial balance here's my trial balance so this is where we stand we made an adjustment to the checking account for those two amounts that were on the bank statement that were not on the books and we made the other side of that adjustment went to the draws account uh, in part for one of the transactions and then to the bank uh the bank charges for the other transaction uh that was that we had to add and that's where we stand at this point in time we'll see if we can wrap this thing up next time